and welcome to For the Clarity and Closure of the Viewers' Comments. I'm just going to say a few brief things before we begin. Number one, when you choose to comment on my YouTube channel, there are terms and conditions, there are rules that you must follow. It's my house. I expect you to follow the rules. If you don't, your comment probably will not be published. Also, I ask that you be honorable and graceful, i.e. respectful of everyone here. Please don't go around telling people what they should or shouldn't do. And if you come here making claims, making claims about this or that or the third or something that's happened to you or whatever, having to do with grammar or courts or whatever, you better be able to certify your correct sentence structure knowledge because this is a correct sentence structure channel and I am going to call you to the carpet on it if you start making claims about something that you perhaps don't know what you're talking about. It's very important for the safety of the vessel. If you have closure on correct sentence structure, you should be able to provide that proof like that on the spot. So keep that in mind. The energy you bring here, I will return. I will balance it out with rule one, rule equal. So without further ado, let's get to the comments. First comment comes from Da5 Fooder. And they're a member. Thank you for your membership. And they say, for the viewer of the post is with the happy of the love hyphen statement hyphen broadcast by the reader. Now, the positional sequencing in that correct sentence structure is not correct. Therefore, it is not correct sentence structure. It has no mathematical interface because every correct sentence structure must start with a cause and a concern and in a verb. You need two points with which to draw a straight line. Cause, concern, verb. For the facts, of the facts, verb. Doesn't matter if you're going forwards or backwards. For the facts, of the facts, verb. For the, of the, verb. Always. It's never for the, for the, for the, with the, for the, by the. No, it's for the, of the. Cause, concern. So as you can see here, if you read this sentence backwards, it would say for the reader with the love statement broadcast, which is not correct. Because 1 plus 2 equals 3, 3 minus 2 equals 1. The plus and minus signs are congruent with one another. 4 is congruent with bio, is congruent with with. So you would have to have either, after the verb, just with the happy by the reader, or you would have to have with the happy of the love statement with the broadcast by the reader or something like that, whatever similar thing that they're trying to convey, although I'm not sure what love statement broadcast means. I guess broadcast of a statement of love, maybe. Again, I'm not a big fan of love hyphen statement hyphen broadcast. It's too close to the Russell J. Gould gobbledygook style of using a full colon and then hyphenating a fiction babble sentence. So I would definitely break that up into a couple more position lodial fact phrases there to make it clear what you're trying to get across there, the five footer. But thank you for the comment and for the sentiment. And in magic fluid process says, fantastic Jason, is it not colon space Nadia? And uh, I guess this guy thinks he's funny, doesn't he? <laughs> Thanks for the comment. Next comment comes from Dominic D'Angelo, 4801. And they say, when's the next seminar? And my answer to that is, subscribe to this YouTube channel. Turn your notification bell to all. And you will be one of the first to hear about the date of my next seminar. Because it's here on this YouTube channel where I will broadcast uh, information regarding that first. So if you're subscribed, you have your notifications turned to all, you will definitely be one of the first to know when the date is. Next comment comes from LA Cruz 10. And they say, how did he die? And they're referring to colon David Ivan Wayne Cola Miller. Um, I don't know for sure how he died. I've read reports that he died of heart failure. I know that he was ill 
and suffered from ill health in the last year or so of his life. Um, I know that from personal accounts that his diet wasn't very good, that he basically kind of stopped taking care of himself. I mean, the way that he used to, where he was very, you know, when you remember in those early seminars, he was uh, talking about diet, he was talking about zappers and how to cure cancer and things like that. But it seems like in the last year of his life, he just kind of let go of all that stuff, which I mean, folks, friends and neighbors, even the individual out there who suggested to me in so many words that I should stop drinking coffee or I should cut down on the coffee for health reasons or whatever. Here's the thing. And no, I don't get any endorsement deals. <clears throat> you only live once. The quality of that life is up to you. The length of that life is partly in your hands, partly not. I had relatives, family members who smoked, chain-smoked cigarettes all of their lives up until their 80s, 70s, 80s, drank alcohol on a daily basis, strong as an ox, no ill effects. And then I've also seen people who never did drugs, smoked cigarettes, ate a clean diet, and they died in their early 20s from heart failure or whatever. So it is really a toss-up, friends and neighbors, and I don't think that uh, any one of us here in my personal position have any authority or, I guess, position to tell anyone else how to live their life um, what they're doing or not doing, their lifestyle choices. It's just not up to any of us to tell anybody else what to do. That's a trespass. So mind your own business because no one can mind your business like you can. That's what my granddaddy used to say. So, you know, that's to all you people out there who may or may not be judging David Wynn Miller for his lifestyle choices in the last year of his life. I highly recommend getting over yourself. Thank you for the comment. Next comment comes from member Jens, and they say, Many thanks for this clear example. It shows me that I have to get clearer in my dictionary to also express it correct verbally, because in the sound I cannot hear and see what is underlined. Hyphen. And I would hear of the glass by the. Many thanks for this awareness. Oh, he's talking about, in a seminar I did a, uh, I showed how I use the bottom line for the punctuated name, where if it says something like, for the claim of the name is with the correctness, with the name Jason hyphen Matthew, and then of the glass by the claim or something like that. If you don't underline that Jason hyphen Matthew colon glass, then it looks like there's an of the in front of a by the. But if you underline it, it does not appear with positional sequencing. And I go into that in multiple videos on this channel. You can just look up uh, the bottom line or the correct name. Just Google. On, on this channel, you have to go to my channel. And then when you are on the main page of the channel, go to the search box and put in like bottom line or put in correct name and videos that on this channel, over 800 videos, the videos that are pertinent to those search t uh, terms will come up. It's very simple. But I know what Jens is saying here because he's talking about saying it verbally. And I have a very simple solution to that, Jens. Instead of saying Jason hyphen Matthew of the glass, just say Jason hyphen Matthew colon glass by the claim. Say colon glass instead of of the glass. Works the same because it's verbally, because correct sentence structure is not really tailored to be spoken aloud. It's for documentation, not for verbosity. Next question comes from AAA hyphen BK7KQ. And they say, let me re ask the question about the positional and loadio being bottom line when fully written out instead of using the colons for the positionals and loadios. 
All right, AAAA, I will let you re-ask the question. And they say, for example, if you would write for the Jason Ivy Matthew of the glass, which I think it's pretty funny that they all capped my name there. I wonder what they're trying to tell me. Or they, is there some kind of underlying in implication there? I mean, writing someone's name in all caps for ease of communication is basically murdering them, killing them, because you're not up using upper and lower cases the correct live life claim name of a live creature. You're murdering them by all capping, capping their name just because you want to be able to read it better. But, you know, whatever floats your boat. And by the way, hey, 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 please don't take this personally. I'm just being a little cheeky here. Would you underline the positionals and lodials? See, the thing is, is I wouldn't write for the Jason hyphen Matthew of the glass normally. I would normally put colon Jason hyphen Matthew colon space glass. And I would underline that. But if you were writing out that name in the context of a sentence, if you said, for example, for the claim of the correct hyphen name is with the, then you would put Jason hyphen Matthew of the glass and you wrote out of the glass, then yes, you would underline Jason hyphen Matthew of the glass and then put by the claim or whatever. But you would not need to put for the in front of the Jason hyphen Matthew because the Jason hyphen Matthew has already been positioned by with the. For the claim of the correct hyphen name is with the. With the has already positioned Jason hyphen Matthew of the glass. You understand? Now, again, as I said in my kuleana, go ahead back and look at all of these videos where I give closure to how to write your correct name and how that would work in a sentence. Any grammar question you have with regards to this topic is answered here on this YouTube channel. You just got to take a little bit of time, put it in the search bar, as I explained a couple minutes ago, and look it up. I've learned from you that only compound facts which are hyphenated are to be bottom lined. No, that is not correct. I have said that I underline compound facts. Yes, compound knowns. But I also underline names or certain titles. So I did not say only compound facts are underlined. I don't think I've ever said that. If I have said that, please send me a timestamp uh, on the video where I say that. Because if I did say that, uh, I, I really don't think I ever said that. So please be careful with when you're quoting me to really get the wording correct, because I really try, I really go out of my way to be very specific about what I'm saying. Can you tell me why the colon after the first name is bottom lined? Because the colons at the beginning is not. Thanks in advance. Uh, because if you are bottom lining a name, you're bottom lining the name, you're not bottom lining the position lodio, which is positioning the name. But again, I explain that in multiple videos. You're more than welcome to search those out for yourself or AAAA apply for a workshop if you're serious about learning this stuff. Because getting closure in a workshop with rule one rule equal performance is completely different than mitigating in a comments field. Thank you. Next comment comes from James8985, and they're a member. Thank you very much for your membership. And they say, hello, Jason. Thank you for thank you sharing your knowledge and precious time with getting the, these broadcasts out to us. I appreciate all your time and effort you put into these videos. I'm a little confused in regards to this or that or articles. I thought a vowel in front of a consonant negates no contract. You thought a vowel in front of a consonant negates no contract? So a vowel in front of a consonant to you, the way you think, is positive performance. Because if you're negating no contract, then you're saying that no contract has been negated, so it is a contract, right? Unless you meant to say a vowel in front of a consonant means no contract, right? I think that's what you meant. Non-tangible words. So I would have syntax at 40412. Would you be so kind and correct my misunderstanding? Uh, yes. 
one way you could do that, James, is to look through my syntax playlist and look up specifically the terms tangible or non-tangible and pertinent videos will come up to show you how tangibility or non-tangibility are credentialed. A vowel in front of a consonant has nothing to do with the tangibility or non-tangibility of a word. I've said that multiple times, so I'm saying it again for your benefit. A vowel in front of a consonant at the beginning of a word has no bearing on the tangibility or non-tangibility of a word. The only particle of negation that affects the tangibility or non-tangibility of the word is a suffix ly. It's the only one that poisons a tangible contract word to a non-tangible contract word. But that is a suffix. Once more, a vowel in front of a consonant at the beginning of a word has nothing to do with the tangibility or non-tangibility. The way you credential tangibility or non-tangibility is look it up in an etymology dictionary, find the earliest nativity root meanings of the words, and then if that earliest nativity root meaning is tangible, then you would syntax the word as tangible. If it's non-tangible, you would syntax it as non-tangible. Now we get to the fun stuff, ladies and gentlemen. I better wet my whistle before we get to this. Trinity Move4XF says, my thumbs up is my autograph. So I guess they're saying that they put a thumbs up emoji and that's their autograph. Interesting. Blue is Admiralty Law. Well, that's your interpretation of it. That's the value of a thing is what you put into it. So if blue is Admiralty Law to you, then I guess it is for you. For me, not so much. One dollar is valuable consideration and five cent stamp is stamp duty. I have no idea what five cent stamp is stamp duty or what the duty of a stamp is. The duty of a stamp is to pay for fee for freight. And for correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, you would use a one dollar stamp or larger in whole number denominations. Period. End of story. I would never use a five or ten cent stamp or forever stamp or anything like that. I only use one dollar or two dollar stamps, whole number denomination stamps. I am as is born again. I am is adverb dangling participle verb. So I've gone back and forth with this individual multiple times. They have no grasp of what correct sentence structure is or what it does. And yet they're trying to argue with me about something that they think is a live life claim, but I don't even think they know what that is. Registered mail is evidence, but for some reason my treasury direct account is locked. Hmm. Well, I don't know much about a treasury direct account, and I certainly don't know anything about your treasury direct account, but I do know there are phone numbers and addresses and contact information for people who need to information about such things. Probably you could just call them up and say, hey, why is my treasury direct account locked? That's pretty easy, right? Just thinking out loud here. And I even wrote accepted for value on the front of my birth certificate. Accepted for value. So you put a pronoun in the past tense adverb dangling participle verb on the front of your fiction birth certificate. Hmm. How far did that get you? And what was your volition behind doing that? What's the point? What's the point? in writing fiction babble in a fiction babble document other than to play fiction games. When you did your claim of life, what did you do that I didn't? And then I respond, well, for one thing, my claim of live life is written in correct grammar. Yes, that about answers everything right there. That's where this thing should have stopped. That said all it needed to say right there. And then they said, besides that, Trinity move for X F grammar next to volition. Grammar is the most important thing. Okay. Learn the grammar first, because if you had learned the grammar, if you had taken the time, invested the energy and value in learning this, 
you would know the answers to these questions. Then I said, next to volition, grammar is the most important thing, and I'm not sure what a live life claim has to do with a fiction treasury direct account. Play fiction games, get fiction prizes, incorrect grammar, fiction in, fiction out. I'm not picking on this person. I'm being completely blunt and straightforward. Because I could tell when they said besides that, in answer to my answer to them, that my live life is written in correct grammar, because they asked me, what did you do that I didn't? Well, I used correct grammar. And they said besides that. As if that doesn't make any difference at all. Obviously, it makes a world of difference because I don't have any of the problems that this person claims to have. Probably because my grammar is correct. Just a guess on my part. For one, you said that the power of a live life claim gives you mastery over yourself. I never, ever would ever say anything like that. And I didn't say anything like that. Those were not my words. And as you will see as we go on, Trinity is actually putting words into my mouth. That's why I said, like I said before, please be very careful when you quote me because I am beyond careful on what I say. And if I say something wrong, I come out and correct it or at least point out, hey, I meant to say this. Because sometimes when I speak, I think I'm saying one thing, but another thing comes out and I only find out about it when I watch a video back. So, I am is your real money. No, I am is adverb dangling participle verb. So it all goes hand in hand, and I got no clue what the hell I did wrong. One dollar stamp in front. Yeah, we already know all these fiction games you played here. Uh, and I autographed both stamps, sent it to via registered mail to Janet Yellen. Why? Who gives two shits about Janet Yellen adjective pronoun? For real. I don't understand. Again, I said, play fiction games, get fiction prizes. I avoided titles, and I did write to a fictional corporation. How do you know that Janet Yellen is not a fictional corporation? No fiction in, no fiction out. No, actually, all fiction in, fiction out. I attempted to put the living in, but it seems I got nothing out. Well, whatever you want to put into it is what you get out. You put fiction in, you get fiction out. It's that simple. Play living games and win living prizes, right? No, play fiction games, get fiction prizes, which is exactly what you're getting. Learn the grammar. Please share a timestamp where I literally say a live life claim gives you mastery over yourself. I asked them for that because I don't remember ever saying that. By the way, I am as adverb verb nonsense. I will say it one more time. In order to have any possibility of success, a live life claim must have correct grammar. What part of this isn't getting through to you? Now, I don't really feel like I'm picking on them or being mean to them. I'm telling them correct grammar is paramount. It's critical to being successful with this stuff. If you want any shot at success, your grammar must be correct and you must have closure on it here and here. Then they say, you said power over yourself, which is the same thing. And if you think I had access to my account, I would be on here asking questions. I have no idea what you think. But I do know <laughs> that you think your thinking is well rooted in the fiction system and fiction psychology. Since you're so full of yourself with your correct parse syntax grammar, how do I discover kundalini energy in my belly? How do I bring it to the forefront? Can your grammar solve this problem for me? And now here they go into this more fiction thing about kundalini. <laughs> I think I struck a nerve, folks, just by being straightforward with someone, being blunt with them, answering their questions, just flat out telling them. What I did different, I used correct grammar. What could be a reason why shit isn't working out for you? Because you're not using correct grammar. I'm being straightforward with them. And now they're getting butt hurt. And then I say, for the second time, please share a, a timestamp for context. And for the umpteenth time, why not learn the grammar? Either that or continue down your current kundalini fiction pathway. Email me using your full correct name and apply for a workshop or take your adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, kundalini nonsense elsewhere. Thank you. 
now I'm kind of showing that I've had enough of their fiction BS. And then they quote, you only have authority over yourself within two minutes and 30 seconds of that video. But I digress. You only have authority over yourself. And then my coolie on the back was, you only have authority over yourself is not the same thing as the power of a live life claim gives you mastery over yourself. It is nowhere near the same thing. They are light years apart. You only have authority over yourself is saying that you have authority over yourself. Not anyone else. You have authority over yourself. And the second sentence, which is what they originally quoted me as saying, is the power of a live life claim gives you mastery over yourself. I never said anything like that. And I would never say anything like that because that's not what a live life claim is or does, which this person has no clue. They're completely clueless as far as how any of this works. They're definitely navigating on assumption presumption full blast. You appear to be assuming meanings that just aren't there. Mastery over oneself does not originate from a live life claim. That's why I would never say such a thing. It sounds as though you don't really grasp what a live life claim actually is. And then I responded back also with a video short response, which you can check out. And then they just completely went silent, as I'm sure either they are hopefully thinking over what they're saying and, and learning the grammar, or they just got mad and left because I'm not telling them what they want to hear. Because when someone comes on here like this, and ladies and gentlemen, friends and neighbors, this is just another psychological angle for you to think about, to chew on. Notice all these things that they're saying here. They're asking me questions. And I'm pretty sure I have a guess that they already know the answers to these questions. They want me to tell them something that they already, they already have their mind made up. They want me to verify what they already have made up in their mind. And because I'm not telling them what they want to hear, now they're getting upset. You see, that, that's what my guess is. It's a very unique and subtle psychological condition of state. It's also known as cognitive dissonance, like results when someone has a really firm belief in a religious entity, and then all of a sudden something happens that shows them that what they believe for their whole life is just simply not true. And then they, they hit a brick wall and they either overcome that and adjust and stop and correct their thinking, or they regress back, they get angry and just ignore the problem and keep going like nothing ever happened. Like maybe they unsubscribed from my channel if they were even subscribed to it, maybe blocked me, maybe took me off their feed. They don't want to hear what I have to say anymore because it doesn't line up with what their idea of how things should be. Which it is what it is. Everybody has a choice. If you'd like to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, contact me at the email address listed at the bottom of your screen. I will set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation between you and me. You can ask me whatever you like, and I'll do the same, and we'll see if this is something that uh, you're prepared to commit to. If you'd like to support the channel, click on the Join button underneath this video. There are two tiers of membership. Uh, the second tier has access to exclusive content not available to the public. Once again, thank you for watching. Uh, hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Turn the notification bell to all so that you don't miss any of my premieres because I do post on a very consistent basis. There are over 500 correct sentence structure videos for here you to study on this channel my gift to you my fellow mankind thank you again and i'll see you in the next one